Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Inspection 360 broadcast. My name is Brandon Wrights. I'm a senior applications engineer with Olympus based out of Houston, Texas. In this presentation, we're going to go over some of the new features available in the OmniScan X3's 5.6 software update. There are many new features and performance improvements implemented in the 5.6 update, so it's recommended that all X3 users keep their instruments up to date with the latest revisions. The most notable performance improvement is going to be the 10% increase in overall battery life. That one's really going to help those techs out in the field. So without diving too far in, I just wanted to go over the basics of updating an X3 and kind of the new flow of doing so. So we have two options of performing software updates. It's either going to be over a removable drive, such as a USB or an SD. That's by downloading software from our website, transferring it over and running that installer on the X3. Or if you have the optional Wi-Fi dongle on the instrument, you can connect to your local Wi-Fi network and those updates are going to show within uh, the Olympus Cloud. So you can know there's a new update by the uh, new icon right on the left-hand side, and then you can select the latest 5.6 update. Same concept there for the USB drive, so I'm just going to click on the update and deploy it to the instrument. So a little bit different than before. Before we were stuck with three different installers. You had the MXU, the system update, along with the probe and wedge update. Now all of those are gonna be tied into a unified installer. So kind of eliminate any confusion and any potential error for incompatible software versions. So I'm not gonna run you through the full installer here just to save on time, but uh, and transfer it over, run the installer, it'll reboot, run through the whole process, and then the MXU will launch and you're good to go. Now that we have the new MXU software loaded, you may be curious on what changes have been made. So if we go to the main menu, go to preferences and about, in the about section, we'll see the what's new category here, and it'll show us all the new features and performance improvements that have been made on this update. So first thing I'm gonna show you is custom overlays with uh, the DXF import function. So we go to plan and calibrate into our scan plan. A little bit different on the left-hand side here, you're going to see a drop-down box for our overlays. We'll be able to select none. Maybe you're doing a zero-degree corrosion or something that doesn't have a weld. Uh, we can select our weld, so it'll give you all of your standard overlays, and now there is a custom option. Within the custom option, we have the abilities to transfer over and import DXF files. So these can be done, something like SolidWorks, AutoCAD, as well as drawn and exported from ES Beam Tool. So I'm going to open my X3 demo block. It's a block with just some artificial reflectors simulating different, uh, different weld flaws, some holes, calibration reflectors, and whatnot. So I'm going to select Open. We'll see R2D DXF file open on the right-hand side here. I can press Apply to Part Geometry. So this is going to automatically adjust my part size and thickness based on what was imported. I can go to my Probe and Wedge tab now. I'm just going to use an A12 5 megahertz probe in contact just to show you this example. And the wedge is going to be contact. I'm going to go over to our groups tab. Along with the DXF import in our law config, we now have law file import. So if you want to write custom laws, whether it be some advanced focusing method, uh, custom wedge, probe, anything like that, that uh, what you wanted to do in a PC-based software like the advanced calculator, NDT setup builder, or ES Beam tool, you can do that, transfer it over and import those laws directly on the X3 scan plan. But I'm going to get started with a basic TFM setup, just gonna be an LL, a zero degree longitudinal wave. I'm going to select next. So I'm going to set my index offset on, let's go ahead and throw it kind of right on the center of this block here. And we can set our zone or our area of inspection for the TFM grid. So I'm just setting my index to the left based on the A map simulating what we're going to see in that part. And I can select done. 
get my probe coupled to my part here. You can see our half pass style holes, some simulated porosity, and we can line that up directly with our imported overlay. So you can see our porosity on the left hand side, our corrosion steps, as well as a simulated crack. So, nice little tool for complex geometries. You can import something maybe with a backing bar, cladding. Um, a transition on the ID, even something like a bolt or a pin. Uh, I'll show you kind of a quick sample of that. Let's have a look at a standard sort of bridge pin here. Can apply our part geometry, and you can see the full pin with the supports and allow you to, you know, throw a zero degree probe on, maybe steer some angles and see exactly where maybe some wear spots or cracking might be. So another example here would be maybe a part with a backing bar. Apply our part geometry. And now in our weld overlays on our weather center phase array or TFM, uh, we'll be able to visualize exactly where these geometries are and you know help the inspector really determine what they're looking at. I've got a basic weld inspection data file pulled up. It's got two phase array groups as well as a TOF group on one of our test sample plates. And I just wanted to show you our new file saving workflow. So it's been a highly requested feature, also kind of touched on and improved from the MX2. So if we finish our collecting a scan, whether we press pause and then save or just save to get that data file saved on our internal drive, we're gonna get prompted with our save dialog box here. Previous to this, we were kind of stuck with either a set file name or a date and time stamp. Now we've got three options. You can select none, that's gonna give you the ability to type in your own custom data file so you can maybe identify a specific part of a vessel or a weld. There's also the, the numeric option. This is the one that's been highly requested among many, many users. So we can select, set a data file name for the start of the data file, and then it will increment based on a number. So you can set maybe starting number one, and each time you press the save key, it's just gonna automatically save that data file. So high production scanning, this is where uh, that's gonna really come into play. And we have our standard date and time stamp. So your data file name you specify along with the date and time stamp that scan was completed. Now that we hit some of the key features on the MXU software, let's dive into OmniPC. So in OmniPC, just like the MXU, under Preferences and System Info, we can get a list of all the new features. Right here, I've got a weld and TOF inspection. It's just a dual group A32. So new in OmniPC, under the View tab and Scan Plan, we can see our scan plan that was before previously just in the scan plan on the instrument itself. So we can go in, get a 3D view of the part, see what our scan and index offsets are, see our coverage, and even see our coupling check channels shooting down here for a zero degree. Top view, end view, side view, Along with the scan plan, you can adjust the weld overlays, uh, not only moving them in the index access offset, but you can also configure new overlays. So under the probe and part, we have a weld selected. It's just a single V. So maybe you collected the data with the wrong overlay. We can come in here, change it to a double V, adjust our parameters there, whatever the angle of the bevel is. And we also have the abilities to import a custom overlay, like I showed you in the MXU software. We'll get into that here in just a bit. So I'm just gonna toggle single display, Let's have a look at a ABCS view. So now we also have the abilities to export C-scan data along with the A-scan data of our B-scans. On the top side of things, 
we have added a gate. So now we can utilize the gate for some readings as well as some amplitude adjustments. So pull up our top data here. I can get, turn on our gate A, just make some quick adjustments. And if we hop into our Omni PC tab, we can utilize an auto percentage adjustment for amplitude on top as well as what we had before on our phase array. So I'm going to open up a different data file and show some of the custom overlay imports. So right now it's just a standard overlay kind of simulated off a well. This is actually a pin about eight and a half inches thick. So I go to probe and part, go to overlays and custom overlay. We can import our overlay, which I have saved as a pin in a DXF file. This one was made and exported from ESBeam tool. And then I can go ahead and just adjust our offsets to line that data up with our overlay. So now we can see our overlay lined up with our data. You can see some of the supports for the pin and you can actually just very easily see that there is some wear right on one of these supports. You can see the threaded end of the pin here and all the walls throughout that. So just a couple nice new features within OmniPC itself, uh, mostly aligning with the MXU software as well.